is a Captain Chuck. Everybody calls me Big Daddy. I am from Damn the Rocks Charters, owner-operator with me and my wife. And if you have stumbled across this video, that means you're interested in building a saltwater reef tank. This video, in the next 25 minutes or so, gives you the step-by-step vlog version of how to set up a saltwater reef tank from building the rocks to selecting and sifting the sand to creating making salt water for your reef fish to survive on and up to including going out and catching some starter fish to season your tank if you're interested in that please stay around take a look watch enjoy it if you like mindless bickering between a husband and wife well that's just an added bonus because there's plenty of that my wife doesn't like to be on the video so she has put me in charge of narrating and being the fo the voice of the video <laughs> which is going to be amusing because, honestly, I know jack and nothing about tanks. But you'll hear my wife in the background. She knows it all, and she's here to help you out. If you have any questions, cares, or concerns, go ahead and uh, shoot us a little email or a text down there. We'll do our best to answer those questions. If you like watching the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll continue doing unique stuff because there's a lot of stuff that I do down here in the Keys, and it's all interesting. So, that being said, you have a good one. Enjoy the upcoming video. Remember that like and subscribe. See you on the flip side, guys. Have a good one. Alright, so today you'll see us putting sand together and then adding some water. So how many sizes of sand do you have? I have like three sizes, maybe four. <laughs> four separate sizes of sand? Well, probably three or four separate five-gallon buckets full of sand. And they are going to do what? Uh, I'm keeping them separated, so when I change my mind on what size I want, or if like one of my friends needs some sand, I'll have extra sand already sifted and cleaned ready for them. So you're, you're hoarding a aqu aquarium sand now? No, I'm not hoarding, it's just, you know... I'll separating. It, yeah, well, yeah. I've sifted it sep separate for size, on size. If you haven't figured it out by now, Building reef tanks and aquarium and stuff like that, you have to be kind of OCD. It's like a scientific experiment, really. You're building. It never ends, though. It never ends. A scientific experiment that never ends. Because it's never completely right. <laughs> something always happens. The stuff, either you do something wrong, which is real bad, or you do stuff too right and then it all grows. And then it becomes bad. So what, what's the point? It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's amazing. All right. I love seeing all the little life swimming around and doing good. And then in my case, I try to catch a lot of my stuff. So when it does really, really good, then I can release it back to the wild and then get some small stuff again. Catch and release small stuff. Now, Diamond Goby's not from here, so if I get one of them, I'll be stuck with him, but they don't grow too big. There we go. All right, so this is the part of putting sand into the tank. And then taking sand and out. And then taking sand out of the tank, and then reassembling the rocks to where they need to be. The next step is going to be adding... Water. Water. Are we going to do that today? I think so. All right, are we going to put fish in it today? No, well, no, I, I don't All know. All right, after much ado about not a lot. We have refiltered, resifted, and changed the organization level of the sand. It's the kind of sand that apparently little dirt sifting gobies can get into. Next, water. So Dallas is now adding water. Do you want to be in the picture? No! Good, you're not. So what are we doing, Dallas? I'm putting the water in this garbage can, and then I'm going to put the salt and put a circulator in it. No! Okay. Don't put me in the film! <laughs> okay, I won't. God. So, we're going to put salt in here. How many gallons of water are you putting in here? Just what I have so far. And how many pounds of salt? Uh, I don't go by pounds. Alright, what does it go by? How much salt do you put in per gallon? It's one cup for every two gallons. So one cup of salt for every two gallons of water. What kind of water are you using? Is it any special water? 
Yes, it's RO DI water. It's RO DI water, which means what? It's been ran through my reverse osmosis filtration system. There we go. So, so it has all the badness removed. All the badness is now removed. This is uh, Dallas pouring more water into the trash can. You want me to be on video now? No! What kind of salt are we using? Instant Ocean. Does it say that? Instant Ocean. There we go. We got some Instant Ocean well, it's salt. it's got stickers on it, but all right. yeah, it's Instant Ocean. So, and what do we do? We take a seashell and just... This is one cup. It's good for two gallons. All right. I have 26 gallons in there. So how many cups do you put again? Half that many, 13 <laughs> cups. <laughs> and what do you do? Just throw it in? Yeah. And then what? Then I drop my uh, a circulator pump down in there and let it run for a while. And then I test it to see if it needs more salt or more water to get it at the specific gravity I need it at. Oh. What's the specific gravity you need it at? I'm going to put a start around 24. 24, specific gravity. Yeah. All right, when will this be ready? Oh, probably in a couple hours, but okay. I might wait till tomorrow. It'll be ready in a couple hours, but she might wait till tomorrow. I wouldn't be surprised if we're out catching fish tomorrow, but that's just me. All right, here's Dallas. We're putting water in the aquarium. Finally, she set up her contraption here and all of her salt and water is in there. And it's gonna go through this cool tube and she's gonna bounce it off of that rock so she doesn't disturb any of her fine sand. All she has to do is plug it in because she's got Get a pump in the bottom of there. Get so, without further ado, we're going to add water. Go. If something goes wrong, this is totally your fault for being in the way. Right. Here's the water. There it is. You see the arm of the elusive Dallas filling the aquarium with water. Now she's washing her rocks down, making sure they all look pretty. Get a nice view of the back side of her arm. That's awesome. So is there any reason that you put your water thing there? I just don't want to blast the sand completely away from the rocks. Not blasting the sand is very important, right? Well, then I'll have to stick my armor stick in there to put it back where it goes. <laughs> Try to avoid that. So this the is water's gonna, kind of cold today. It's kind of cold today. <laughs> So this is going to fill relatively quickly, right? Yeah, this isn't enough to fill the whole thing. This is only uh, like 35 gallons. This is a 55. I'm going to have to, this was only the bottled water I had. I'm going to hook my RO up after this and fill it the rest of the way with the RO and then add the additional salt that I'll need. Okay. So Because the sump holds probably another, that'll hold another 35 gallons right there because that's a 40. <clears throat> 44 gallon, I think, some. Uh huh. And this 40 is a. 40 gallon, and this is a 55 gallon tank. So, we have 99 gallons? No, because this won't hold 40 gallons. I'll, it'll probably have about thir between 30 and 35 in it. Okay. What's the purpose of the sump? That's where all the magic happens. That's where, that's where the magic happens. That's where happens. the magic happens? Yes. Okay. That's the science project part down there. So we'll get into the science project part with you in a later that's video. That's the life support system. So that was pretty dang quick, is running, running your water up to the portion of the tank. You're not gonna film this the whole time, are you? I don't know, maybe. This is like boring. Watching the water run. I've watched, I've watched aquarium videos. <laughs> All right, there you go. Water in the tank. All right, so the tank is now full. The refusium is also full. Apparently, the next step is to go out and catch some starter fish.
No, she has to check and see if the salt level's right. Then we can go get fish. All right, so here is the best part. Going out and actually catching some fish to get this tank started. It's a little schmutzy out there, but I'm sure we'll find something that we can put in the tank and get her up and running. And you'll probably see the wife out here who will always scream, don't video me. But she has no option but to be on video today. So we're going to check that out. Ain't that right, honey? I'm not talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's do a video thing about catching fish, but I don't want to be on it. And let the guy who knows nothing about catching aquarium fish or setting it up do all the talking. Because that's the awesome. So let me see you guys in a minute. See you, Skip. Well, you got two. It was almost a good skipping rod. <laughs> so here's the beach walk. We're going out to the rocks to find some starter fish. What are we looking for, Dallas? Some sergeant majors. Sergeant majors. Yeah. Anything else? No, not really. Today. Why do you pick sergeant majors? Because they're damsels. They're really tough. They can live through anything. Because they're damsels, they're real tough, and they can live through anything. So. You're looking for big hardy fish or hardy fish when you're starting your aquarium and that's what we're going to hope to find today all right tide's coming in we're still on our quest for things that we can put in the aquarium my wife has informed me that these little snails right here are uh 100 times better than turbo snails they're all over the place but it's not good to put put them in your aquarium until after the tank has cycled and it gives them something to eat like algae and you know sift through the sand and other stuff but this is where we get a lot of our stuff and uh, if we ever have to leave or take the aquarium down we put it back where it came from and that's just a big part of my wife's aquarium husbandry habits so stand by we'll get you some right, stuff so we made it to the beach mama's out there coaxed herself into the cold 80 plus degree temperature water for the locals down here in Key West it's almost time for that uh, you know either the three-quarter wetsuit at the very least the shorty with a long john top <laughs> but this is what you do to go out and find some local fish for your aquarium here we are prepping you don't want to get all the way in the water because that would be cold I've got... I can hear you! I know. <laughs> I've got some hot water in the back of the truck to warm her up when she gets out of the uh, Arctic Atlantic Ocean freezing water. So we're collecting some fish. Now I'm going to tell you right now she likes these smaller fish. I don't know why. She does this to me all the time. She'll get tiny baby fish and then raise them up and then release them back into the wild. I'll come home and the aquarium will be empty of fish. That's my cue to go out and find more fish. All right, she got herself a little sergeant major after she coaxed herself into the water. Well, only halfway. Only halfway. Let's take a look. Oh, no. <laughs> that tiny thing is what, she, what she's going after. <laughs> but I still managed to not get my hair wet. Well, that's a well, lot. Just, yeah, most of it. This is a brief piggle break. The piggle's having herself a beach day. And they're right, pig. That's right. All right, go see what mama's got now. As she lurks around the rocks, face firmly implanted into the ocean, leering and peering into the cracks and crevices to find her next subject for the tank. Ooh, you can see she's mounting the net, hoisting it in there. And now she's guiding what she's, what she's got, we don't know yet. What'd you get? Nothing. She don't, she don't want a little grunt. Run like hell. Good girl. Alrighty, ready for All right, now snack? we can see what we got. We got a salt shaker. 
Where's your treasure at? Alright, opening the bucket. There's the two little fish. Okay. So we have two little fish. Alright, now I'm going to take this net with me this time. And then I'll be back. Alright. Don't forget, where's our salt shaker treasure that you found? Good girl, Gigi. The treasure. <laughs> All right, so far we got three little fish that are going to go in, and the whole purpose of these fish is to start to season the aquarium. We'll show you more of those when they get into water. All right, what'd you get now? We'll see what you got. You got fish in both nets. Yeah, so <laughs> That's what I'm supposed to do is film you. No, I can't get out of the water, it's cold. <laughs> it's just like an IV. It drips per minute. Goes down, fills the tank, acclimates the fish. And then, by this evening, We'll have something different to look at. Alright, this is the high speed scientific fish acclimation unit. Basically, what it consists of, it's what it looks like to me, is an IV drip system, and she's sending it down to the bucket of seawater that she almost emptied out. <laughs> and now she's Dripping gonna, it into the bucket. Yeah, but I'm gonna slow this down. It's going way too fast right now. Is there any other way to acclimate fish? Yeah, you can just float float their bag and then and then add some add some water. So what's uh, the from the tank? What's the positive side of doing it the way you're doing it right now? I can leave. <laughs> I don't have to come keep coming back. And when I'm once this is dripped enough water in there for them. Uh, and then I'll pour some of this off or once I put at least two or three times the amount of water that's in there with them I can just dip them out with a net and release them in the tank. So the whole point of acclimation is what for people who have no idea? Uh, to keep from shocking the fish because of the difference of water that they've been in and the difference of temperature from the water that they've come in. So you want to do this slowly so it doesn't shock them because that will kill some fish some fish die real easy these are tougher fish they're gonna be able to to be acclimated relatively fast i'll probably acclimate them for 40 minutes or so 45 minutes and uh but some things could take several hours to acclimate without shocking them. So what kind of fish did you get? I got, uh, unfortunately, only one Sergeant Major, because there just was none out there since Hurricane Irma. There's just no, no, the little Sergeant Majors are not around like they were before, but there's some just little striped, like little grunt type fish. And there's some little pork fish the so the ones you... with the yellow heads are the pork fish, and the little ones with the stripes are the little grunt, little uh, grunts. I'll have to look them up in the book. I don't know the exact name of them. And uh, then I have one little sergeant major's the yellow and black stripes up and down. Mm -hmm. So how long do you keep these fish in your aquarium? What's the whole purpose of having them? Well, you can keep them for as long as you want, forever, but I'm just going to use them to acclimate just to season the tank. How long does that take? Um... If I do it slow, probably a month. So we get to look at these for a month? Yeah. Before we put anything else in? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Okay. Kind of, and I'll, you know, then when the time comes, I'll probably catch these and release them back out. And then I'll change the load on the tank from these guys to something else that I would prefer keeping long term. Because these tend to get a little 
snippy and bitey with each other and anything new you put in. So they're just real good, tough, hardy fish from the beginning. Tough and hardy. All right, see you in 40 minutes. Here we are, moment of truth. And the aquarium now has fish. We'll see if they make it. And that's how it starts out. We are seasoning the tank. You just put some starter fish in there to uh, get the tank acclimated to start its science project. And my wife will tell you exactly what the science project consists of in just a second. So she don't want to tell you what they do now. She just wants to look at the fish hiding in the corner because that's what they do when they first start out. Ah. How many are there? Two, four, six, eight, ten, ten. I think. Yep, ten. I thought I had 10, unless there's another one hiding in the back. I don't know about. All right, until next time. There you go. And remember, damn the rocks. Reefing's a science project, an ongoing, ever going, never stopping science project but it's fun to look at